And so friends, let's start with today's lovely and easy to prepare marzipan recipe. So here I've taken 200 grams of cashew nuts and I've soaked them in some water for about an hour. Then we are also going to separate the egg from the yolk. We're only going to use the egg white for this recipe. Now I'm going to grind the cashew nuts using a little bit of the water in which it was soaked to a very fine paste. So it should be a nice and fine paste like this. So this is our cashew nut paste. This is the consistency we're looking for. I'm going to be using 200 grams of powdered sugar. This is the one egg white and I'm going to use one teaspoon of almond essence. If you don't have almond essence, you can go with vanilla essence too. Now first I'm going to beat the egg white a little. And then I'm going to add that to the cashew nut paste and mix it in well. I'm also going to add the essence and mix the three very well together. This is a super simple recipe and it takes much lesser time than the milk cream recipe which I uploaded. This gets, gets uh, ready quite fast. So now I'm going to use a heavy bottom pan and I'm going to add this mixture to the pan. I'm going to turn on the heat to a very low to medium heat. I'm also going to add the powdered sugar. Mix everything in really, really well. And now all we have to do is just keep stirring this mixture on a low to medium heat till everything comes together, you know, really well. And also so it starts to leave the sides of the pan. Now you can use a wooden spoon with a long handle because this uh, liquid also starts to splutter like the milk cream recipe. Uh, I'll leave a link to all my other Christmas recipes down in the description box as well as the comment section box below. So you can go and check them out. So now just keep stirring till the mixture leaves the sides of the pan. This should take you about 2-3 to three minutes. And then you'll get a thick mixture like this. And then within about 10 minutes your mixture will thicken like this. So now we're going to do the water test. I've just taken some water and if you're able to form a smooth ball, that means your mixture is ready. So just do, use room water, uh, room temperature water and then just take a little of it and just, you know, roll it into a ball and you can see that it's a nice firm ball. So our mixture is ready. Now I'm going to transfer it to a steel plate. You can use a glass plate also and let it cool completely. Don't try to handle the mixture because it is piping hot. Now, once it has completely cooled down, you're just going to knead it a bit with a little, uh, you know, you can add a little, few drops of ghee or clarified butter to smoothen it out and then just knead it into a very smooth dough. And then we're just going to uh, make it, you know, divide them into sep uh, smaller balls because we're going to add some lovely color uh, to the, uh, to the marzipan. So... I went with uh, some nice light, uh, you know, pink and uh, a little bit of green and a little bit of pastel yellow, as you can see. And then all you have to do is make them into very small balls like this and put them into a mold, whatever mold you have available, your choice of mold. You can use the thick rubber ones or these silicone ones also. And uh, this uh, dough is so easy to work with, the marzipan dough, that, uh, you know, you can easily form these lovely little marzipans. And uh, also the uh, shelf life of these marzipans are really long. So you can store them in an airtight container of steel or glass and you can keep them in the refrigerator. They last for about almost two to two to three weeks in the refrigerator. And whenever you want to serve them, just thaw them or just keep them out for about 15 minutes and you're all set to go. So I hope you liked today's uh, recipe and I hope you give it a try, guys. I'll catch you soon in my next recipe. Take care. Bye. Today, let's see how to make this beautiful, soft and uh, light, you know, as soft and light as clouds and as delicious as ever, marshmallows. It's super simple. If you follow all these steps, you're going to definitely get it right. 
So now first I'm going to start by brushing a glass bowl with some oil and setting it aside. Now to one fourth cup of hot water, I'm going to add 30 grams of gelatin and stir this really, really well till all of the gelatin, you know, dissolves in this hot water and set that aside. Now I'm going to take 180 grams of regular sugar and one fourth cup of water and we're going to boil this for about 10 minutes on a low to medium flame till it really thickens very, very well. Once it thickens, I'm going to add this gelatin mix to this uh, sugar syrup and again we're going to stir this really well till all of the gelatin mixes really well with the sugar syrup and we get this very thick kind of sugar syrup. So when you're boiling it, uh, you know, you get this foamy kind of texture and then it becomes a real thick mixture. Now pour this thick mixture into a nice clean dry bowl. Let it cool for about a minute or so. Then we're going to add about one teaspoon of vanilla essence. And then we're going to whisk this for at least 8 to 10 minutes till it becomes into this thick, foamy, white kind of a mixture. It will happen, but it will take about 8 to 10 minutes. But whisk it really, really well. And then you will see that it becomes into this sticky kind of a mixture. This is exactly what we are looking for. And now we are going to pour this mixture into the greased uh, you know, bowl that we prepared. Don't forget to grease the bowl, otherwise it's going to be very difficult to demold the marshmallow. Now you can add color also if you want, but I was going with plain white. And now we're going to tap the bowl so that we release any air bubbles if there are any. And then we're going to rest this for four hours. Now after patiently waiting for four hours, we're going to create a mixture of exactly half of corn flour and half of powdered sugar. About half a cup should do. And then we're going to use this to demold this uh, marshmallow. So dust your surface, dust the marshmallow, dust your fingers, or dip your fingers rather, and you know, just loosen the marshmallow uh, from this uh, bowl. And because we've greased it, it comes out really, really well. But you have to roll the marshmallow in this mixture of uh, corn flour and powdered sugar. Otherwise, it has this very uh, sticky kind of consistency. And now we're going to cut it up again. Take a sharp serrated knife. Dip the serrated knife also into this uh, uh, corn flour and sugar, uh, you know, powdered sugar mixture all the time. And then just cut them into, you know, whatever desired shape. I'm going for normal squares that marshmallows come in. And uh, that's it. And they're so, so soft and light and really delicious. And of course, they are made at home. So no preservatives, nothing. And, you know, you can just put this in your hot chocolate or in your chocolate bombs recipe that I've shown. You can, uh, I'll link it down below. And you can enjoy these marshmallows, even roast them on the, you know, hot flame and just eat them directly. So I hope you give this recipe a try. Don't be afraid. Just give it a try. Give it a go and you'll be so pleased with the result. So I hope you enjoyed today's recipe. Go and check out all my other Christmas recipes, guys. And thanks for watching. Well, today I'm going to be sharing a recipe for your Christmas tree, which is not a sweet item, but a savory item something to just give a different taste on your Christmas tree. So today's recipe is going to be spicy cheese straws, which is super, super simple to make and simply delicious to eat. You're going to love it and want to make it all the time. So let's jump ahead straight into the recipe, guys.
So let's see the recipe. Now here I'm taking my 200 grams of maida all-purpose flour, adding 125 grams of cold butter and we're going to crumble the butter and mix it very well with the flour till it resembles breadcrumbs. Now this step is extremely important to get that lovely flaky and crunchy and really delicious cheese straw. So don't skip on this step. Just crumble them up with your fingertips. Now we're just going to add one entire egg which I've just beaten and then we're going to add all of the cheese. We're going to mix up all of the cheese very well and now we're going to add our pepper powder, red chili flakes, garlic powder, the baking powder, the garlic bread seasoning, mustard sauce and we're going to mix everything well. Now this dough really comes together really well and quite quickly and you get a very nice and soft and firm workable dough. So just knead it Use a nice flat surface like this and you can work with it better. Now we're going to add the chili powder and the garlic bread seasoning. You can also use Italian seasoning but this garlic bread seasoning is easily available and really has a very delicious flavor. So just knead the dough very well for about at least 2-3 to three minutes. That's also very important for this recipe and then just keep it wrapped in a cling foil or just in a uh, just cover it and keep it in your refrigerator for about 30 minutes. Now after 30 minutes preheat your oven to 180 degrees Celsius and then just lightly dust your surface with some all-purpose flour. And then we're just going to uh, take our dough, which has rested well for about 30 minutes. Just flatten it up in this fashion. And then with your rolling pin, just gently uh, roll it out to at least half an inch of thickness. Now this dough is so easy to work with because of all of the, the resting period and the kneading, etc. It just is very, very easy to work with. You will see when you... Uh, you know start rolling it out and then uh, we want to just take a knife or a pizza cutter and we're just going to cut this uh, cut the edges off so that we get a kind of a square shape because we're going to cut strips so this makes it easier do retain this dough because we're going to again you reuse it to make the remaining cheese straws so nothing goes to waste then just try, gently just roll it again and then just mark about a uh, one inch of uh, you know just mark them because it becomes easier for you to cut that way and then just uh, cut uh, long strips like this with a pizza cutter it really works very well you can also use a sharp knife and now I don't want very long cheese straw so I am cutting it uh, right in the center Now I've also lined my baking tray with some parchment paper or butter paper and just lift them up gently and then just twirl them in this fashion but both ends together. Just practice, you'll get the hang of it. It comes really very, very easily. Just lift them up and then at both ends just twirl them. They look so pretty. And I'm, like I said, the, the dough is so easy to work with that, you know, you'll be easily able to give this twirl. So you can keep it at full length if you like or, you know, keep it at this length. And just keep some space between uh, any two uh, cheese straws because they do fluff up a bit. And friends, let me tell you, once I put this in the oven, my entire home had such a beautiful aroma of, you know, the baking, uh, the cheese straws that it was just, we were just waiting to dig in. So now we're going to bake this at 180 degrees Celsius for about 15 to 20 minutes. So just keep an eye on it because every oven is different. 
and after 30 minutes you'll see that the cheese straws have baked so well let them just come down to room temperature because before you lift them up from the tray uh, because then they might just crumble and break so let them just completely cool down and then they're really you know you can just pick them up and you have just taken one for tasting and it tastes so so well, uh, good i mean you can actually see how well it has baked and they're so crispy and really really delicious now this is going to be so nice on your christmas tree because this so f i mean our christmas tree is generally full of all sweet things so this is just going to add a different flavor and since it's spicy so definitely your friends and family are going to love it and it's so easy to prepare what you can do is just uh, you know keep all of these cheese straws ready and uh, you know when you're ready to serve them just bake them in the oven so that you know uh, like before your guests before you're ready to serve them just bake them and let them come to room temperature and then serve them uh, you know to your guests or your family now you can store them also but store them in a glass container that way they have a longer shelf life so this is good for an evening snack or just to have with a cup of tea or coffee so i hope you like today's recipe friends and i hope you'll give it a try do let me know in the comments box how you liked uh, this recipe now i will leave a list of all the christmas sweets that i've made this year and for the past two christmases i leave the link of each of them in my description box as well as comments box so if you want to go and see any of my recipes just click on the link and it will take you to my recipe and you can uh, see them all of my recipes are really simple and easy to follow and thank you so much for all the lovely response that i got on all the christmas recipes go and check out akshita's recipes i have more than 400 recipes at the moment and you can check the playlist because there i've segregated everything according to the type of recipe like